Hey guys, Chris from Provo Beast Audio Installation, and today we're doing a amplifier and subwoofer install to a factory radio in this brand new Subaru Impreza. In this video, we're going to show you how to run all the cabling needed to install this on your Subaru. Let's get started. Now the first thing we need to do is run power from our battery to the amplifier inside the car and we're going to do that through a firewall grommet. Now generally on these Imprezas, if you pull apart the wheel well lining, there's a grommet there at the kick. Um, at the same time, depending on the trim level here, you may have a grommet, factory grommet you can go through there as well. We're going to run the power wire from the positive here through an inline fuse through that grommet into the inside cabin of the car. Now the parts that we're going to be using is an amplifier wiring kit. We're using the 4 gauge new concepts kit. We're using the NVX BDA 7501 750 watt amplifier by NVX. Comes also with a base knob. We're using a lineup converter from NVX, the XPLOC2. This provides a remote turn on signal as well, which is super nice. And finally here for the sub itself, we're doing the uh, NVX 12 inch VSW 12 4 version 2 450 watt to 600 watt um, subwoofer RMS and we're going to pair that with a vented box by B box here um, it's a 12 inch box um, that should accommodate this up pretty nicely so we're going to use this amplifier wiring kit run this power wire from the battery inside the inside of the car. This video is sponsored by NVX Audio, your location for high quality car audio components. Use coupon code PBAI to get 10% off your purchase. Okay, so what we've done here is with a wire, a little hanger here, we actually pushed it through that rubber grommet and we'll get a closer shot for you. But we push that through there and we can fill it on the other side. And what we're gonna do is with our power wire here, um, we just taped it to that wire and then a little soap and water there on the grommet side. What we're gonna do is pull this on through and it'll slit through that rubber uh, without damaging any of the factory wiring. Uh, but allowing us to make a seal around our new aftermarket wire just so we don't have any moisture getting inside the car. So there is a kind of a better shot for you. So we just poked a little hole and pushed that wire through. And again, be sure that you have plenty of clearance away from the, any factory wiring because you do not want to damage that. There it goes. Okay, so we went ahead and pulled that wire on through there nice seal around it we're going to pull enough through but leave enough here in the engine bay so we can put our inline fuse get it mounted and get everything buttoned up to the positive side on the battery now here in the car we're going to run that wire down through up and over the transmission tunnel to this side of the car and we're going to be mounting our amplifier underneath the front passenger seat um, to get the seat out you're going to have four 12 millimeter bolts on each corner we have our impact there and what we're going to do Let's grab our impact and go ahead and pull out our bolts. You can use just any standard socket wrench as well. And then once this is out, we're just going to lean the seat back. We're not going to remove the seat, just giving us enough space to get the amplifier mounted and wired. Okay, so we went ahead and pulled all four bolts out. Just lean the seat back. And we put our amplifier in just to test fit it, and that's great. Fits perfect. And the nice thing is here, I mean, there's plenty of room for the amplifier to breathe. Um, as the air can pass up and over the top. Um, what we're gonna do from this point is the power wire that we pulled from the driver's side um, kick panel area, we're gonna run on, up and over. We're gonna pop these panels out down here so we have plenty of space to run that wiring into our positive and negative. So we've routed our wire just up out of the way here. Now we pulled this little you know, side, um, side panel cover off inside the uh, engine bay here. And what we've done is made, got a piece of ABS plastic and uh, pulled this bolt out that normally holds down the fuse box, put a hole in our ABS plastic and then put the bolt back in. So we had a nice solid place where to mount our fuse holder. And then this end will go and go to the positive on the battery as soon as we're ready to get this finally wired up. So since this is in at this point, what we can do is actually put this piece back on we're about done underneath the hood besides hooking up the battery when ready. Now up underneath here, I'm gonna try to get a good shot of where this wire comes through. Came right out there. 
And then what we did is just tucked it down. And there's a little space. Kind of see that blue wire here? That goes up and over the transmission tunnel um, and leads out to the other side. So we ran our wire down up underneath the carpet and then head over to the passenger side. Okay, and so the wire came out here from over the transmission tunnel. And then we just pulled the carpet back here and then wrap the wire down here. As you can see, we can have that tucked down. Now this is just held on with clips. You just unclip your kick panel from these spots and there's gonna be one on each end here. Once that's out of the way, you can even pull your kick out, just held on with clips again, and the clip may stay in, so just be aware of that. Once um, that's out of the way, you can pull this up, it actually unclips, and then we got our wire, and then we routed it down here and pull that out here and there's the rest of the extra length which we'll cut to length and so that's our power wire now for our ground subaru has provided a nice factory grounding location right there and what i've done is using a wire brush i went ahead and cleaned that paint off there and used that 10 millimeter bolt to bolt down the ground for our amplifier and then from here we got our power and ground which will just cut the length so that's ready to go um, let's go ahead and get the power and ground wired into our amplifier and then from this point on all we have to run is the speaker wire to the back trunk area for the sub itself RCAs and remote turn on wire up to the dash to tap in for signal and ignition uh, for the amplifier okay so at this point what we've done is got our power and ground all connected we started running our remote turn on wire and then we have our speaker sub output that we ran along all the way to the back as well we have our rcas and base knob wire and we have ran those up underneath as well we cut out a piece of um, abs plastic it's 16 inch plastic and uh, we actually found one of the studs from the factory um, factory equipment that wasn't being used and put a nut on it and it's nice and solid and then we screwed the amp to the plastic so that's not going around anywhere and it looks really nice up underneath the seat um, with the RCA's base knob wire and remote turn on wire we fed those up here and it's come out to about this point and then we fed it out just outside here with the glove box removed what that is going to do is allow us now to prep pulling the radio out of the dash cavity so we can run these RCAs and remote turn on wire up to tap in the signal for the amplifier for the remote turn on wire and mount our base knob. So let's go to that point. Okay, so we're ready to pop the radio out so we can access speaker wire outputs from the radio in order for us to install a line out converter for our amp. So the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and now we've already loosened these panels, but you're gonna have one, two, three, four clips. And using a panel tool or your fingers just to get up underneath those corners here, this is the kind of tool that we used. And you'll see that they pop out. Same thing on the other side. You're gonna pop that out and you're gonna have one, two, three, four, and you can see all the clip locations there. Once that's out, you're gonna have to get this top piece out of the way. And that's probably the most difficult part because you have three main clips in the middle and then two on the outside, and then all these guider clips that guide that piece into this upper panel. The upper panel doesn't need to come out, but it may come loose as you try to pry it. Once all those are out, again, everything held on with clips up to this point, then you're gonna have one, two, three, four screws that are all Phillips. Pull those out, and that is what is holding the radio in. The radio will come free at that point. Now, Subarus are notorious for having short wiring harnesses. So you're gonna pull this out as far as you can and then you're gonna have to stick your hand in there to start disconnecting harnesses so you have plenty of space for um, access there. Now it's always advisable at this point, if you haven't done so already, remove the negative off the battery. That just ensures that you have um, no electrical going to our radio uh, to avoid any short circuits. Okay. So what we've done here is when we disconnected all our harnesses, the harness that we want is this harness here. Um, and with our wiring coloring, we're gonna go through each one 
Um, but just for reference, it's a standard Toyota harness in case you want to plug one in. In the event you're replacing the radio, it's the kind of harness that we're using. Well, I'm going to use this as a reference here to kind of show you what wires to tap into. Now, what we've done here is using a wire stripper, we've just stripped back the shielding. And then uh, we put a hole through the wire and then fed the wire through and wrapped it around. Um, you can do this, you can solder directly onto it. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend cutting the wire inside, uh, wiring into it. We're just trying to keep the harness as clean as possible. Then we'll tape up each connection individually and then relume the harness with Tessa tape so it looks factory. So going through each wire here, the ones that you're going to wanna connect into, your four speaker wire, um, starting with this blue here on the edge. Blue is your right front positive. And then that pink right underneath it is your right front negative. And then, then you have a little purple and white there. Purple is your right, or excuse me, your left front positive. And white there in the back behind that purple is your uh, left front negative wire. And so what we've done is connected into those corresponding four wires with the harness that goes to our line-out converter. Um, and then the fifth wire that we're going to want is typically your ignition wire or your red wire. And what this is on the harness is this solid um, next to this blue, white, uh, blue red wire. This yellow one is our ignition wire. So while we hooked our remote turn on wire that'll go to the amplifier to trigger the amp to turn on when the key and radio is on. So we got that hooked up as well. Now if you don't want to use that method and, then send, and instead use the signal sense, um, this line-out converter also provides that option where if you hook up the power ground um, into the harness as well, the line-out converter will uh, sense a signal um, and turn on and turn on your amp automatically for you rather than tapping into ign ignition wire. So different alternatives to set this up. So what we're going to do is now wrap each wire with uh, electrical tape and then relume the harness with Tessa tape. And at this time, um, hook up our RCAs and our remote turn on wire that we've already fed through, hook up our base knob, get our radio reinstalled, get the negative back on the battery, and do a test. Okay, so we re-loomed our harness there. As you can kind of see that there, we used some Tessa tape. We have our line-out converter connected. And then the line-out converter is connected into those RCAs here as well. And then um, that's basically it. We reconnected everything on the back of the radio just to ensure that the radio functions properly. Uh, but nice thing is there's plenty of space underneath the radio back behind the HVAC controls that that line-out converter can just rest nicely and safely there. Um, we didn't use the power ground function or the trigger function on our line-out converter. And just going to the... Ignition wire on the radio works fine to trigger the amp to turn on, so um, no need to, to do anything different there. Um, and again, everything's tucked nicely down in there. There won't be any rattles, and everything's taped up like factory. So at this point, um, we're going to go ahead and put the radio back in. We're going to button up underneath the hood, tune our amplifier, um, and then uh, bolt down the seat, and we're done. Okay, so we went ahead and replaced the cover there. The Fender lining on the inside, good to go. Got everything zip tied. Got our cool little mount all done for our fuse. Um, what I did is I drilled a hole in the back of our terminal cover so I could bolt it up, which I did to the positive. So that's all done. Negative is back on the battery because we're all safe to do so. We're done up underneath the hood. Let's go ahead and put the radio back in, get the seat bolted up and finish up. Okay, we got everything all reinstalled. Got the seat ball bolted down. Cool thing is this amplifier kind of glows blue. Here in the back, we decided to go with this NDX 12 inch as we saw on the bench. Got that all mounted up. Everything sounds great. If you have any questions about this install, just go ahead and post a comment below. Thanks guys for watching. Hit that like button to support us. Subscribe for more great content and we will see you in the next video.